Let us prove Euler's theorem, which is just a generalization of Fermat's little theorem. And it says that if a and n are relatively prime positive integer, then a to the power phi n is congruent to 1 mod n. What exactly phi n is there? Phi n is the Euler's phi function, and it counts the number of positive integer less than or equal to n and relatively prime to n. Let's state the proof. So n denote a positive integer. Observe that phi n denote the number of positive integer less than or relatively prime to n. So let those positive integer be denoted as r1, r2, r phi n. There are phi n in number. So we denote it simply by r1, r2, r3, dot, 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 r phi n. They are all relatively prime to n. Now, let a be integer. A, let A be a positive integer relatively prime to n. We consider the integers A R one, A R two, A R three, A R five n. So what we are doing is that we are simply multiplying R one, R two, R five n by A. We consider this. They are all integer. Can it happen that any two of them are congruent? If, of course, R1, R2, phi n be those positive integers less than and relatively prime to n, and all distinct, all, obviously they have to be all distinct. They are all distinct. We are not repeating them. They are exactly phi n in numbers. We are simply uh, counting each of those. We consider A R1, A R2, A3, dot, 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 A phi, R phi n. If ARI is congruent to ARZ mod n, then we can take A common and write A times RI minus RZ is congruent to 0 mod n. But A is relatively prime to N. A and N do not have any prime factor. Whatever be that, we can simply cancel it out. We can divide by those primes to A as well as N. And so ultimately we will have that Ri is congruent to Rz mod N. Ri minus Rz will be congruent to 0. So Ri will be congruent to Rz mod N. What does that mean? But you see that Ri and Rz leave different remainder when divided by n. So it cannot happen, which is possible. Which is possible only when i equal to z. Of course, for n equal to 1, it's obvious that uh, the theorem is true. So let's, let's prove it better. If Ri is congruent to Rz mod n, then Ri minus Rz is a multiple of n. We assume n greater than 1. We assume n greater than 1 because the theorem is obviously true for n equal to 1. Is Ri minus Rj is a multiple of n. Uh, but see Ri is greater than or equal to 1, less than n. So, Ri minus Rj is greater than minus n and less than n. 
See, we are assuming n greater than 1, so ri cannot be equal to n because they has to be relatively prime to n. So minus n n, ri minus rj will lie between minus n and n. It is a multiple of n. Which one is the multiple of n that lie between minus n and n? The only case is ri minus rj has to be equal to 0 or ri has to be equal to rj. So what we see is that ARI is not congruent to ERJ mod N. So ARI is not congruent to ERJ mod N whenever I is different from N. Now let us look at the remainder when ARI is divided by N. ARI, if I divide by N, let Q be the quotient, ARI minus QN is the remainder. Now can it happen that ARI minus QN has something common factor with n? No, because a is relatively prime to n, a do not have any common factor with n, and ri is also relatively prime to n, uh, a ri minus qn is also relatively prime to n. And that's also true for every ri. So it must happen that a ri is congruent to rj. That's the only possible remainder mod n. They are all relatively prime, so it must be congruent to some rj. Some a ri, if I divide by n, the remainder must be some rj for some j unique to i. That is, that is, a r one, a r two dot dot dot, a r n, are congruent to r one, r two dot dot dot, a e sorry e r1 e r2 dot a phi n there are phi n number of them so they are congruent to r1 r2 r phi n but in some order e r1 may be congruent to r5 e r2 may be congruent to um, r2 and so on e r2 may be congruent to r7 and so on so we can say that e r1 times e r2 times e r3 times e R phi n is congruent to R1 R2 dot 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 R phi n mod n. Oh, how many such a occur here? You see that we there are phi n numbers. So a to the power phi n times R1 R2 dot 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 R phi n is congruent to R1, R2, R phi n mod n, which can simply be written is, we can take R1, R2, R phi n common, R1, R2 dot dot dot, R phi n times a to the power phi n minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod n. But again, e r one sorry, again r one r two, they do not have anything common with n, so it follows that a to the power phi n minus one is congruent to zero mod n, and so we can say a to the power phi n is congruent to one mod n.